Hey, welcome to another Corona workout. So glad to have you. Um, today we're going to focus on everything kind of like waist up. So we're going to do some back buys, chest and tries today, a little bit of everything. Um, so we're going to start with kind of a warm up and kind of an I hate you exercise. Um, so we've done a couple of these in this set of workouts. We're just going to do 30 push ups. So your choice of push ups, um, your choice of how many you want, you can do all at the same time. I'm going to try to pump through all 30 at the same time at a moderate speed. Um, you can go as uh, slow or as fast as you need to go. Make sure your form is good. Um, I suggest starting out with our standard push-ups and then if you need to, dropping those knees for a few and then maybe try and get back up. But again, we're just gonna do 30 all the way through and that's gonna act as our warm-up. We're get our chest, upper body, our full body nice and warmed up. So we'll get into our push-up position. I'm sorry, already. <laughs> But at least they're first, we can get them out of the way. <laughs> it's 10. It's 20, find your happy place. I'm gonna chat <laughs> before we move into our first superset. So get through. We need to get a sip of water, things like that. Um, that's fine. Go ahead and give everything a roll, but I feel warmed up and ready to move on. So our first superset is going to be our kind of take on a bench press with our dumbbells, which we did, we've done before. So we're just gonna lay flat on the ground. We're gonna get those arms in that 90 degree angle. We're just gonna push up from the floor and then we're also going to do a tricep kickback, which we've done before as well. We're gonna glue upper part of the arm to the body and then open and close, and then we'll lean forward in kind of that standard position we use for all the things. So, I'm gonna grab my weights. I'm glad I only said 30 push-ups. I almost wrote 50. Um, actually, I'm gonna turn this way, it gives me more space. I'm really glad I didn't say 50. <laughs> I mean, I would have gotten through them, but it would not have been anyone's definition of fun. Okay. Anywho, so I'm going to have my legs up, uh, legs bent as so. We're going to have arms out at a 90 degree angle, so your elbow and shoulder should be lined up, and then your chest should be right in between. You want um, weights obviously pointing up, and then we're going to push together, and then come back down. We're just going to do 10 of these. If you don't have heavy enough weights where you start to feel it after 10, you can always do more. That's perfectly perfect. I never said it, but these repetitions are kind of to get an idea of where to start. You can always adjust. If you have really nice heavy dumbbells for these, maybe you only do something in the six to eight range. If I were at the gym with like an actual bench press with a barbell, I'd probably do something closer to the five to eight range instead of 10 or more, so that's okay. So we're gonna move into our tricep kickbacks. We're gonna do 10 of these as well. We're gonna do both together, so bilateral. If you have a heavier weight um, at home that you wanna use, uh, you might wanna try unilateral, so doing one arm at a time. Um, that allows you to do a heavier weight. So totally up to you. I'm gonna bend down in my kind of standard position where I'm just sticking my butt out to everybody. Glue upper arms to your sides and then open and close. Remember, really good squeezes right there at the top. Nice and slow and controlled. My head was not in the right position. Let me move it. There's six. You want to keep from bobbing. You don't want to use your shoulders. You just want to really focus on getting those triceps to do the work. And there's ten. So we're going to come down and do that three more times. Just going to power through all my rounds on this one. Upper body, I tend to take more breaks. They're smaller muscle groups, so I find that it doesn't kind of get me winded the same way that leg exercises do, except for push-ups, because those aren't <laughs> purely an upper body, those are in all of the body. Here's 10. Ugh. To my tricep kickbacks, that was the 
most ungraceful getup <laughs> that ever existed. <laughs> Am I the only one who feels that way? Like, sometimes I feel like I'm the most coordinated, graceful person that ever existed. And then sometimes I feel like the biggest klutz that ever existed. I always run into door jams. Is that just me? It's like I, I'm trying to get through, take the shortest pass doors so I ended up hitting my shoulders and hips on door jams or tables and it's very frustrating but man you can lift some weights with good form so there's that <laughs> actually that's not true I do really putty things at the gym too I drop them weights all over myself all the time maybe I am clumsy just try to act like I'm <laughs> If you have ever met my dad or heard his story, his athletic story, you'd know why I would want to be coordinated and athletically inclined. He's an athletic freak of nature. So, all right. There's set number, that's three. <laughs> oh, already struggling. Head down, Kim. This is what you get for being an egomaniac over here staring at myself and my TV, bad form. Seven, six, squeezes, eight, squeeze right here, nine, ten. Excellent. So we have one more of these situated here. I always somehow wear my hair in the wrong ponytail. <laughs> Remember at the top, give a good squeeze. So squeeze those chest muscles together against like your sternum. It's like the exact opposite of anything we do on our back where we squeeze against our spine. Now we're squeezing things together. Right there. There's 10. Let's try and get it more gracefully this time. Squeeze on these last one, seven, squeeze, eight, nine, and there's ten. Excellent. We're already done with our second exercise. We see you already forgot about those push-ups, right? Not that bad. Um, so now we're going to move on to some more back, and we're going to throw in a little core um, on this one. Uh, two that we've also done before. It's like a review day. So we're going to do some mid-back rows. I did that in the workout with my sister, the first one. We did them on the floor. Today I'm going to make a little adjustment and do them on a chair um, to show you more what it would look like in a gym setting. And then we're going to do some Russian twists. That's the one where we sit down in like the pike position. And then we're going to go side to side with our weight in our hand if you feel comfortable. So I'm going to grab my chair. So, please. Um, you want to face your chair on the side. And then the outside arm is going to be the one that does work. And then the outside leg is going to be the one that actually stays on the ground. It seems a little counterintuitive. And I'm going to put my back leg up on the chair like so. Um, if your foot is leaning off like mine, you want to make sure that your toe is flexed so it's facing the floor. Now this chair isn't very long. Like if you have a piano bench or a longer bench, that's better for these. So I'm actually just going to put my knee on and then I'm going to bend forward. So I'm actually in that same position I was for like my tricep kickbacks. I just have one leg down and one leg up instead of both together and bent. Um, when you notice that I do these, just like we did in the, the mid back rows before, I need my back really nice and straight and I'm not like heaving like this. This is not a mid back row. It's really, we're pulling with this part, our lats right here behind your shoulder blade. You're pulling with that muscle and coming all the way up and you're gonna get a little of this lower back right here as well. But you're not like pulling your whole body open and closed like that, um, it actually turns it into like, like a lot of other things. You end up bringing in a whole bunch of other muscle groups. So kind of position your legs the way that they fit. Back one's probably going to be straight, hope as straight as possible. And your butt, just like all our other ones, should be shooting out right behind you. Just going to let the weights hang. And then I'm going to pull up so that my arm skims across the side of my body. And then you want your head in the neutral position. So notice I'm not swinging all over the place. If you have to like swing and use momentum, 
to get your arm up, just like all those things that I've said before, it means your weight is too heavy. Put some weight, put your weights down, grab a different weight. It's way too heavy if your whole body has to squeeze. And then at the top right here, I'm squeezing this shoulder blade into that spine. So now I'm gonna flip this direction. Oh, you need a chair. So now left side will be down and doing the work, right side on the chair. Okay. And then pull. And as I've said before, if you're using weights that are lighter than what you really could be using just because of lack of options, that's where you really focus on, put all your mind into the muscles we're working, which is our entire left side of my back right now, and pull those muscles tight. Tell them what to do, give them good squeezes at the top like that. Okay, so that's 10. Sit over here for our Russian twist. Not enough space. <laughs> so remember our Russian twist, you can sit like this and turn if you need a challenge. Balance. You can put your feet up. Grab your weight. I hope I can help you. Then we're gonna tap here. There, there's one. We're actually gonna do 20 here. Keep, if your legs are in the air, trying to keep them as still as possible. Don't want them swinging all over as well. And focus on using those abs to turn, not your shoulders. So you have to put your mind's eye in those abs. All right, here's 15, we're gonna do five more. If you start with your feet up and need to put them down, do that. This is a pretty big number of these to do. You could also choose a lighter weight. One more, I think we did extra really quick. Okay. <laughs> okay, just gonna power through to my next set. But as always, if you need to take that 10 to 30 seconds, that's fine. Really try to keep it when we're within one exercise to 10 or 30. We do, if you move through these exercises, that's the way to help get your heart rate up for a few extra calories. I don't know about you, but I've been eating all the ice cream. So I have a few extra calories I can afford to burn. <laughs> right, here's 10, good squeeze, All right, flip it around, if you liked the other version we did before where we're just on the ground, that's perfectly fine, you don't have to use the chair, the chair or benches at the gym are really great when you start getting super heavy weight. Um, you can also just stand in a split stance. Actually, I'll show that to you on our next round. I'll show you how you can do it if you don't have a, a chair that works. Sorry, I forgot to show that. <laughs> I'll do that on the next one. But you definitely don't need a chair for those. It's really awkward. Doing both of these at the same time. It's like harder <laughs> than the Russian twist. And I horrendously miscounted our last Russian twist. Like I lost count like three times. So I'm gonna try to do better on these. show you how to do the mid-back rows without the chair. Um, so it's a similar stance, just this time the back leg, this the outside leg is going to be back, hands on the front leg, so your, your legs are split the opposite direction without a chair, right? So this would be the leg on the chair, now it's going to be the forward leg, your other leg back. You're going to lean forward, still have a really nice straight back, and your butt is still sticking out a little bit, and then you're going to pull. that arm up the body. So the arm movement is exactly the same. 
back positioning, exactly the same. Still body, exactly the same. The only thing that is different is how your feet are positioned. So honestly, just read that one. Try it both ways with or without the chair and see which one you like better. They're both perfectly fine. Switch this way. Either way, keep those that core nice and tight, nice and slow and controlled. Next time we're just keeping the top. Good squeeze. We'll move into our Russian twists. So while we do these Russian twists, decide which position I give you three options. The one with my sister uh, standing and then on the chair. Decide which option feels the best for you. Your weight, the weight that you're holding, might also determine some of that. <laughs> I'm gonna figure this out. There we go. Hopefully I can hold them. <laughs> Last two, 19, hold tight, 20, beautiful. All right, our last set, I'm gonna go back to my chair here. And then after this, we only have one more thing remaining. It'll be our triceps and some shoulders. Why am I taking so long to get this done? <laughs> Anyone else feel, feel that you like dilly-dally now? Everything I do takes twice as long as it should and as it did when I, you know, was like going to work and outside of the house and had a bedtime. Just over here like lollygagging, like I got all the time in the world all the time. But it's probably because I have all the time in the world all the time. <laughs> Nothing's ever due. <laughs> I would like some more structure back in my life. Next time we're gonna hold it to the top. There we go. And now we'll move into our last set of Russian twists. Last figure out how to hold the weights. Here we go. Halfway there. Power through. There's 15. 16, almost there. 17. 18. 19. Last one. 20. Beautiful. Okay. Moving on. I'm going to use my chair again. Again, this is an exercise we've done before. We're going to do dips. Um, I think a chair like this is a best option because it's nice and sturdy. But in this case, like the side of your couch, just put your hands on the couch will work. Um, or any chair, even a soft one. I have high top chairs for my dining room table. Those are a little tall. You probably want like a normal height dining room chair table. That will work even if it has like padding on it. I'm going to stick the weights between my legs. Um, so I like a little more weight for these. But just using your body is perfectly fine. Remember, if you're holding the weight, your legs are going to end up a little more bent in our dip position. Um, if you don't have the weight, you actually want your legs closer to like a straight line. So I'm going to scoot off my chair. We want arms as wide on the chair as we can, but we want elbows pointing back. Okay? And you want to go all the way down so that elbows are at a 90 degree angle. We're going to do 10 of these. Here's four. Five, six, seven. Think about those triceps. So you use your triceps to pull you up. And that like 
You're using some chest, but you don't want your chest doing all of the work. Now we're gonna end with some front raises with that one. I'm gonna add my other weights in. We're gonna do 10 of those. So roll those shoulders out. We've also done front raises. Arms are just gonna come shoulder height right in front of you. Remember, don't use momentum. Make sure you stop at the bottom before you start the next rep so you can really use those muscles and focus on that kind of like the top part of the shoulder to pull up. We're also gonna do 10 of these. Hold that core in. Everything else on your body should be nice, quiet, and still. Last one, beautiful. So I'm again, just gonna keep powering through. Not a lot of breaks in this workout for me, but if you need them, do you boo boo, do what you gotta do. home that's heavy but flat not like a dumbbell that you can stick in between your legs if you have something flat and heavy you can stick it on top of your legs get the same effect so it would fit on your legs more like this right but you obviously want something flat that's not going to roll all over the place so be creative with your weight you're adding for your dips when I miss count, I think I'm on round three and it's really only two. So, which I'm pretty sure I've said in one of these videos because I've lost count on the rounds <laughs> lots of times. directions. <laughs> it helps me figure out which set I'm on. 
excuse, this is how my brain works. Little quirks, little markers so I know what I'm doing. Two more. Last one. Woo! So, we either did four or five sets of our dips and our front raises, and it's fine either way, right? Um, thank you for joining me for another Corona workout. I hope your upper body is feeling strong and works today. Hope to see you on our next one.